Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. So happy to be bringing you the fifth episode of our Let's Play for Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous and a Devil Mythic Path. Uh, appreciate all the support thus far. Everybody who's been watching, commenting, let me know how much you've been enjoying the uh, content. Definitely please keep it up. I appreciate it. it. Let's me know that the channel wants to continue seeing this. Uh, my intention is to take this at least to Act 3. And then when we get to Act 3, I'll probably reassess and see if it's something that um, enough people are enjoying that it makes sense to continue. But for right now, I'm having an absolute blast. Really, really enjoying going through this playthrough with all of you. And with that, let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, I believe this is Ramian talking with Halron, most likely. My beloved brother, I admire your zeal, of course, but would you not agree this is hardly the time to be standing guard over a hole that no one will ever emerge from? Or perhaps you're concerned that someone will decide to go for a nighttime stroll and will accidentally fall into it? Such foresight is laudable, but do you really need so many soldiers for such a task? Can't your warriors be put to better use, for instance, fighting demons or clearing rubble while the people trapped beneath it might still be alive? The face of this golden curled Asimar is beautiful, even by the standards of his kind, in whose veins run the blood of angels. His melodious voice sounds cheerful, but bitter reproach simmers in his gaze. Don't you dare call me brother, heretic. The signs of recent hard fighting are obvious in this stern old man. His armor is dented and covered in blood, and his unnatural pallor suggests something more dangerous than wounds inflicted by claws and fangs. Nevertheless, his gaze is stony, and his voice, accustomed to barking orders, is harsh and clipped. How dare you accuse me of doing nothing to protect this city, especially now when followers of your temple were caught committing treason! To my mind, you are no different than the demon worshippers, those miscreants, those beasts that are digging under the city walls. Everyone knows, my dearest prelate, that in your zealous pursuit of order in the city, you have long since forgotten how to tell friend from foe and good from evil. That's what happened with my adepts, whose act of treason was a genuine attempt to save the city. And yet again, I am forced to repeat myself. While we are wasting time on pointless quarrels, people are dying under the rubble in our city. People whom we could have saved if you had only set your soldiers to the task and not kept them here, surrounding a useless and utterly harmless hole in the ground. Harmless? <laughs> well, if it's on your say-so, then that must mean there's someone down there. Your associates, no doubt. And they're just waiting for us to abandon our posts before they slink out and try again to... The old man notices your approach. And you... I remember you. You appeared in my city the day the demons attacked and Terendalev died. What are you doing here? Answer at once or I'll have you strung up by your ankles before you know it. Don't think that the demons have wounded me. I still have enough strength to take on a hundred of your sword. And what is this hideous creature? Halron peers at Windwalk with suspicion. The huntress shoots at him an icy glare. We call ourselves the Neithers. Our forebears bore the brunt of the demon's first strike. In thanks for their sacrifice, you sent them into the catacombs. But now that the demons are mauling you in the streets, you need allies, even hideous ones like us. Windowalk pointedly spits on the floor. Mongrels, descendants of the Crusaders, hmm, a feral specimen, no doubt. You obviously know human speech, <laughs> surprisingly well, in fact. All right, let's be off with you. The prelate looks at you. If she causes any trouble, I shall hold it. you responsible. Uh, come to think of it, you still haven't told me who you are. I'm a crusader. I'm fighting to liberate Kenebris from the demons. A crusader, you say? Hmm. I'll be looking into that. You obviously don't know to whom you are speaking. I'm the one who decides who's a crusader and who's a traitor in this city. Horon Shapak, prelate of Kenebris, by the grace of Her Majesty Queen Galfrey, and the city's defender against threats from within and without. 
And as we can see, you've done a sterling job protecting the city. The gold and curled Asimar flashes a flinty smile. I am Ramian of Edme, prior of the Temple of Desna, which, alas, currently lies in ruins. Wise Halron here believes it is vital to guard this hole in the ground from which he is certain demons will emerge at any moment. I have been trying to convince him that the city has far more urgent matters to deal with, for instance, rescuing those currently dying under the rubble. You know what? There may in fact be one matter that is more important than guarding this hole. I've put it off and put it off and look where it's led us. I should have had you hung from the gates back when you dared to defend your gang of delinquent demon collaborators. If the Sikorians had hanged the Relu Vorlesh while they had the chance, there never would have been a war. I won't repeat their mistake. I won't hesitate any longer. Soldiers, seize this scum! Prelate, uh, see reason. These are frightening times, but threatening to hang someone without trial, that is unworthy of a servant of Ioma Day. The old man fixes his eyes on Sela. Lest you forget, girl, we may say you're the same goddess, but you are not an inquisitor. Don't question the way I choose to serve Ioma Day, and I won't question yours. What precisely are you accusing Ramian of, inquisitor? Treason! Not long before the city was attacked, several followers from his temple tried to secretly access the ward stone and perform an unknown ritual over it. Halron is trembling with fury. The ward stone of Crenabris, the gift from Ioma Day, the bringer of light, wrought by the herald, the hands of her herald, the first in the chain. And followers of that crazy runt of a goddess try to meddle with it using their magic after hearing a voice in their dreams. My soldiers almost had them caught when Ramian got in the way, allowing the traitors to go to ground. I made a mistake. I didn't have him locked in a cell and interrogated to within an inch of his life. And now the city lies in ruins. It's time to rectify that mistake. I told you before, and I'll tell you again. My people foresaw the attack on the city. They knew the Wardstone already carried the seed of corruption within itself, and they were simply trying to heal it. I've heard similar claims before. Now, where was it? Ah, yes, from Staunton Vane, the traitor who brought down Dresden. The lessons of the past have taught us a great deal, and that is why I never believed you or your mom's lies, even for a second. And I was right. Requires angel. Oh, so, of course, I'm lawful. Usually I would go the lawful way. But Isaac, right now, he's a more good-spirited individual. And he believes in enforcing the law in an equitable manner. And what he sees right here, he doesn't believe the law is being taken into account. He basically says, feels like, Horan has allowed his emotions to get the better of him, especially when he hears about civilians who are trapped under rubble and are not being helped. And he can feel the power of the angel inside of him. And he feels like there might be an opportunity to calm down the whole entire situation so that we can refocus this energy and efforts in a way that'll serve the citizens of Kenebris in a much better manner. Requires angel mythic path. Reveal the light of heaven. Behold, Inquisitor, I bear the gift of an angel who died in the caves below Kenebris. I am no enemy of yours. The old man frowns and whispers something. A prayer or a spell? With each word, his face relaxes. You are telling the truth. The light in your hand was wrought by the power of heaven. I... We'll keep an open mind with regard to you, stranger. And later, under less fractious circumstances, I would like to ask you about how you came to receive this gift. But that can wait. Now I must deal with this filth once and for all. Oh, I thought that would stop him. Uh, let's see. He's not going to... Uh, see, I don't like the chaotic answer either. 
you know what okay if he's got he's not gonna say nothing because this is obviously a very situ serious situation he's got to make a decision i don't like the chaotic option because he feels like Oran is not approaching this situation rationally but that doesn't mean ramian is innocent right there's absolutely a possibility that ramian deserves to be hanged hanged based upon what he or his gang has done so if he has to make a choice then he is going to side with Horan. lawful you're doing what's right Horan. there's no place in the crusade for troublemakers that's not again that's not really how he feels but he is essentially on Horan's side like the law must be applied but he wish a little bit more discernment was used the Asimar shakes his head you want to fight on the side of this witch hunt? Believe me, you're making a grave mistake. His leadership hasn't saved a single life so far, but it has cost many. Ramian looks at the prelate. You are a fool, Holron. You are a zealot and a murderer, but you are a fool first and foremost. I told you that the Wardstone was weakened. You wouldn't listen. I warned you that the city was going to be attacked. You shooed me away. The truth is that my young adepts were trying to save the Wardstone and you stopped them. Of course, those truly responsible for this tragedy are the demons, but you have done nothing to prevent it. And now you would still rather kill an innocent person and perish yourself than admit that you were wrong. As always, with a wave of his wand, the Asimar vanishes. He fled! The heretic is no doubt expecting me to rush off in pursuit, but that won't work on me. Holron turns his attention to you. What about you? If you truly have been marked out for a gift from heaven, this is your chance to save the city. Go and bring back that filthy traitor. I am almost certain that he and his cronies were helping the demons, either knowingly or unknowingly. Their attempt to bewitch the Wardstone is clear proof. Rabian must be captured. I see you suffered greatly in battle. Nonsense. I had to deal with a brood of Nabasas. It was nothing. I've taken on worse enemies with the goddess's help. Ah, failed the con con check. The Inquisitor seems hale and hearty, but you're not sure if his wounds truly are Marnie or if it's all just bravado. Nabasas. Mm, this prelate is mighty, sure enough. But a strong predator is tired and spent after defeating a rival, and he becomes tempting prey for smaller hunters. But smaller predators, in turn, should ensure that they do not choose a target that is far superior to them. Weakness can be deceiving. What would a city girl know about wild predators? I was educated at home. My studies were rigorous. Why are you obsessed with finding enemies everywhere you look? Why? Why? You must not be from these parts, or you wouldn't have asked such a question. I look for enemies everywhere because our enemies are everywhere. Who were we at war with? Demons. Demons and cultists. They are masters of deception. They worm their way into your favor and masquerade in all manner of false guises. Do you think Dresden was taken by force? No, by trickery. Were it not for me, Tenebris would have gone the same way long ago, captured out from under our noses. Now listen to what I'm about to tell you. This was a long time ago. I was very young then, and I had just joined the crusade. Back then, Kennebris didn't have a garrison so much as a public thoroughfare. Anyone who wanted could just stroll into the city. One day at dawn, a group of refugees came up to the city gates, bold as brass. The guards let them in, and why not? For no one was ever turned away. Twas no matter. Everyone was welcomed in our city. If you came from Mendev, or if you'd hauled yourself up here from across the seas, the crusade accepted all and sundry. But on this occasion, we paid dearly for our laxity. Just as soon as those innocent lambs entered the city, they transformed into demons and rushed towards the Wardstone, slaughtering everyone who tried to stop them. 
62 people died in less than a minute. The demons used their mutilated corpses to desecrate the obelisk. None of them dared to go near it. The light of the goddess burned them all, so they threw the blood from afar, spattering the wardstone from every direction, and the lead demon, an eyeless beast, Monago is her name, jeered and gloated, saying we mortals had been sitting ducks, and the creature was right too. We let our guard down, and we got what we deserved. The bloodbath came to be known as the Red Morning Massacre, and it was burned into the town folk's memories. Since then, Kenebris has adopted different practices, heretics, cultists, spies, all the rabble who covered in Arilu's glory, we drove them all out of the city. We haven't had any trouble here since. Many have come here, even the Baylor Koromaza, and they have all been sent straight back to where they came from, or else they were killed for their trouble. You see, the Skari himself had to crawl out of the abyss and come here. The goddess cursed him in order to break through our defenses. And what did he do? He left again, and we're still frightened. Now, that is what vigilance and discipline can do. Ramian really warned you about the attack? Those crazed Desnas were always bursting into my study with their incoherent prophecies that came to them in their dreams. I won't lie, sometimes what they did come to what they said did come to pass, but can we really rely on the woolly dreams of heretics over the cold hard facts of intelligence reports? Plenty of demons could have easily fooled them and whispered a treasonous plan in their dreams, and those lunatics would have only been too happy to listen. This time, Mr. Curls for Brains came to me and declared that demons were about to attack the city and that the Wardstone's power was diminished by some kind of contamination or taint. I owe him a day, forgive me for even repeating the words. After uttering such blasphemy, he should have been locked up along with his followers and interrogated. But instead, I simply increased the surveillance on them. And what next? My people caught them red-handed trying to attack the Wardstone with unknown magic. And not three days later, the demons attacked the city. There's an obvious connection between these events. Whether deliberately or under demonic influence, the Desnans played right into the hands of Daskari's hordes, and they almost left the city completely defenseless. Ramian covered for his people the whole time and helped them escape my guards. After that, what else can he be but a traitor and a heretic? Man, to be... <laughs> to be so loud and so wrong. <laughs> There's nothing dangerous in this hole. You have no reason to guard it. You told me yourself that you received a light bringing gift from an angel who perished in the caves below our feet. It is no secret that those passages are teeming with dangerous creatures that could kill anyone, even a warrior of heaven. Demons and demonic offspring love roaming about underground. That's why I will be keeping an eye on this hole. If the beasts decide to attack from here, we'll be ready for them. Where can I find Ramian? How should I know? The weasel can't have gone far. He turned invisible. He's probably hunkered down in some hole, like the traitorous little rat he is. And he'll be sitting, trembling, and waiting till he's dragged out of there. Uh, with the prelate after you, that seems the only sensible thing to do. It is what I do. <laughs> I have to go. Go on then if you have to. It would be good if you could return with the head of that scum. Ember peers intently at Halron. I remember you. When father and I arrived in the city, you met us. What is this gibberish? As if I have nothing better to do than to arrange meetings with vagrants. But it's true. You and the other knights tied us to stakes and started lighting the bonfire. Father died, and then one of your knights changed his mind and pulled me from the flames. Oh, but then he died too. Don't you remember? If you were burned, then it was with good reason. You say some traitor helped you escape from the fire? That is a crime in itself, which means that you have been evading justice all these years. If it weren't for the invasion, I would have viewed your case and see that your sentence was finally fulfilled. You're lucky that we have some important matters to deal with right now. He didn't look the way he does now, all wrinkled and gray. He was young, with a big mustache. 
Ember smiles broadly and draws a large, bushy mustache in the air with her finger. He probably forgot all about me. It was a long time ago, but I do want to say one thing. I'm not cross with him. This knight is a true hero. He just really, really wanted to protect his city. Only, he got all mixed up about who was good and who was evil. You forgive him after what he did to you? He thought he was doing what was right. How do you know? Maybe you've done something thinking it was a good thing, but you were really doing a bad thing that hurt someone. But what if, what if I've done the same thing? You can't get angry at people for making mistakes when you might be no better than them. He's not going to bother with this first one because he's not convinced Ember is actually an innocent child. There are clearly things going on with her and especially hearing that she was previously burned at the stake. That makes him even more suspicious about her true nature. So right now he's not convinced that maybe whole Ron should have just went on ahead and burned her at the stake. Let's go Ember. Yes, let's go. Bye bye, kind knight. She waves to Holron with a carefree smile. Holron grimaces and turns away. Whoo! Man, oh man. The Mongol's face is screwed up tightly, his bloody fangs broken. The Mongol's body is sliced from shoulder to groin. Have they been murdering Mongols who came up out from the depths and tried to reach the city? Yo! Godspeed. The dirt trap beneath the Mongol's claws suggests that he was climbing, clinging to the walls. Yo, I, I, that's what it seems like has happened, and if so, that's unfortunate. Let us press on. I think this is our first interaction, right? Ooh, let's do it. The demon invasion transformed all of Kenebris into one great battlefield, but nowhere in the city suffered as much as this square. This place saw a clash of titans, the demon lord Daskari leading his hordes from the abyss and the dragon Terendalev, the mightiest of the city's defenders and one of the first to fall. The scene of destruction leaves no doubt as to the battle's outcome. A skilled scout could recreate the course of the battle moment by moment simply by looking at the ruins. From the chimneys torn down by powerful wings in a sharp dive to the bloody tracks left behind when the demon dragged away the noble reptile's broken body. But it is no hypothetical scout gazing upon the ruins. It is Isaac, and he is not alone. The shadow of a strange, barely perceptible presence lingers over this place. Like a gaze, untethered from any observer, this mysterious force, unknown to mortal kind, silently assesses, judges, and seeks a better way. In an instant, Isaac is vested with this power and looks at the world with its eyes. The past, present, and future stand before him as a unified whole, an unmoving, multifaceted crystal that would be beautiful were it not for the fractures, blemishes, and flecks marring its splendor. What past does he see? In the past exists the one who wielded this gaze in life, although the one and life are in, a pos in a posit op opposite terms for aeons, for eons, the supernatural embodiments of cosmic balance. Rather than who or what, a better word for these entities is how this eon appeared from outside this world from the great beyond to put an end to the intermingling of the planes and destroy the world womb the chasm disrupting the order of the multiverse alas the visitor from beyond proved too weak for the battle they came to fight they even failed to finish casting the spell that would have sent Ascari back to the abyss with one swing of his scythe the demon lord cut the eon down what present does he see? Ruins, blood, corpses. None of this perturbs the eon's dispassionate gaze. The living are alive. The dead will be judged by Phrasma. All is as it should be. But the demons circling in the sky or prowling through the streets create a jarring juxtaposition. 
like splashes of blood red ink on a restrained pencil sketch. They should not be here. The world of mortals is for mortals. The demon's place is in the demon world. How sublime the world will be if everything in it knew its place. But even the demons aren't as abhorrent as a sharp-edged, unassuming crystal languishing in the dirt among the bricks and smashed cobblestones. No mortal would notice it, but to the eon's eyes, its mere existence is an outrage against universal laws. If the eon still existed, they would not stop until the crystal was unmade. But the eon is gone, and only their gaze remains. Isaac picks the crystal up out of the dirt and stows it in his pocket. He is mortal, which means he has the power to decide what to do with it. What future does he see? Good and evil, chaos and order, everything is in its lawful place in the multiverse and is no longer trespassing where it does not belong. Nothing is disrupting the smooth and steady current of the river of souls, from life into death and back to life again. The reality, rid of its flaws, is now perfect, and the eons withdraw to eternally admire its beauty which will never be threatened again. After allowing the hero to view the world through their eyes, the little that remained of the destroyed Eon is killed even appropriate here for an entity that is so removed from life and death as we understand them, used up its last vestiges of energy. Now they are ready to disperse into nothingness, unless someone decides to preserve the Eon within themselves. With the hero, take on this power so that he may again look at the world through another's eyes or we allow it to vanish requires eon mythic path retain the eon's power within yourself the spirit of the eon dwells out of sight deep in isaac's soul like a pair of magical spectacles stowed away until the moment when the hero once again needs to look at the world through another's eyes <laughs> and so begins our path. Ooh, 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 ooh. On Eon. And yeah, I don't think I. We need any special buffs for that. Whoa, there's actually a lot of these people. Maybe we do. Hold on. Boom, ba boom, ba boom, boom. Yeah, let's go ahead and get that cleric down, shall we? Oh, very nice, very nice, very nice. Um, flame bright, flame blade, and then now there's another cleric over here. So actually, yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Can I do that? Excellent. Okay. Now we can just go ahead and go. Let's do it. Just a little more. No Figures. Without risk. And oh, there's a dredge here. Let's definitely get that dredge out. Let's definitely get that dredge out of there. And then let's get the player before it comes up as well. go boom 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 very nice very very nice very very nice take that take that hmm identified half plate boom doom, doom, doom. yep sell 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 oops I didn't mean to pick that up but I'll take it excellent all right it's hard to believe that this place recently held a bustling and festive market. Hard to believe indeed. And here we go, our first Midnight Bolt. We'll make great use of this at a later time. Um, oh. I remember what's over here. Uh, actually. I hear the voice of the spirits. Oh, are we out of healing? No reason to pause. Um, here. 
Boom, doom, 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 doom. I do recognize that there's a, a user to fully healed option. I just say, I don't know why I keep ignoring it. Uh, ooh, medium armor, but none of us use that. So yeah, we'll let that go. Um, am I equipped to be able to deal with those folks over there? I think I am actually. Yeah. We'll go ahead and just deal with these people now. Ah, oh, crap! I thought I was gonna be able to get the jump on them, but do I need to? No, I think I should be able to deal with this, right? Actually, no. Because we need Ember to be able to carefully... Ooh, that helps. That helps. I forgot about that. Actually, here. I keep forgetting they're, they're mice, not swarms. So, regular weapons would work just fine against them. Yeah, let's do that. Where's Ember? Ember, come on over here. Thank you. There we go. Uh, oh, I forgot about that. They'll, they'll freaking disease you. All right. These people are not killed by demons. Their mortal wounds were inflicted by ordinary weapons. So if you end up hanging around this section long enough that you have to do Defender's Heart, if you come back to uh, this area, the market square, there are a couple of places where new enemies will be available to fight. And they're going to be like new harder foes. And this is one of those areas where they'll be hanging around. If I remember correctly, this is one of the areas where you can um, end up facing a uh, tougher foe. What is the deal? Sila, you I should be on this I can. one. Do we have... Hey, actually, You're doesn't she person. have a like remove disease type thing? Treat affliction? Yeah, she does. There we go. Now, what about you? Yep. Now, what about you? Nice job, Ember. Look at you. Already earning, earning your keep. I appreciate it, darling. All right. Now. Um, do I go upstairs? Yeah, let's go ahead and go upstairs. We might as well. <laughs> Strangers everywhere. Watch it! Watch it! What are you girls doing? You're bloody crushed me! A young tiefling lies trapped in a collapsed section of the tunnel. After two tieflings scramble around, trying in vain to free him from the rubble. Quit whining! Hey! Alarm! Someone's coming! Maybe he will help us. Wise up, would you, before you get us killed? Let's make a run for it while we still can! No! Come on! Don't leave me! I'll die here! Like a cross louse! When do all wrinkles our nose? Let us leave this place, master! This pathetic creature's not even worth spitting on! Hey guys! I see you're in a bit of a jam! <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Get a load of this lot, and no escort neither. Well, Jeff, you little shit, how are you not dead yet? <laughs> and who's that with you? They, they're friends of mine, great guys. Well, Jeff turns to you, and out of the corner of his mouth says, Listen, do me a solid. Help them drag his sorry carcass free. They'll repay you. Cross my heart. Who are you? Who, us? Uh, we're well, nobody, just simple citizens. We used to live here, but now... Yeah, we just lived our lives. Don't nobody any harm, and then kaboom, the place falls about our ears. The tieflings are antsy. They're hiding something. What will you pay me for my help? So he does already. Obviously, the devil has to have something to latch on to in order to be able to pull him down, right? He does have a mean streak, and he does have a prideful streak. We ain't got nothing. Poor as church mice we are. Psh, left your money at home, did you? Well, I've got my money pouch in my pocket. It's all yours if you help me out. 
You look like you're up to something. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't kill you where you stand. All right, all right, don't hurt us. People call us the thieflings. Well, we, we, we kind of skirt around the edges of the law. That's how we make our living. Some, say some tyrant bans books that show stuff he don't like or fancy cone and wine he don't drink. Is it wrong if we step in to fill the gap in the market? If there's a demand for it, someone's got to sell it. Don't go thinking we're gangsters or anything. Our only concern is making the lives of citizens easier. For a little coin, people in this city can't even breathe without breaking some stupid regulation or restriction. Take this tunnel that collapsed on top of our friend, for instance. It leads straight to the Great Garrison. Thanks to it, any soldier whose throat's feeling a little dry or who's, le uh, who's needing some nighttime reading material, we could get all the things for him that his heartless superiors refuse to. We're providing a public service. Enough talking. Get these rocks off of me. You sent me down here for a goddamn crate of cognac, you idiots. Now get me out. Lawful. A thief's place is in prison or on the gallows. I'm taking you to Erebeth. Sure. Over my dead body. What are you doing that for? And I ask you all decent like too. Didn't I tell you we never should have came to this city? We knew we wouldn't be welcome. Defeat is not an option. Ooh, I've actually never killed the teeth with. Wow, this is my first time killing the teeth leaks. I hope I don't end up needing them. Oh well. Wow. Yeah, I've never done the end mission of this uh of Act 1 without the Tieflings available. That's interesting. Now that I think about it, I guess I've never taken the uh, lawful option there. I didn't mean to get that close. Didn't mean to get that close. All right. There we go. Window up. Do, do, do. Excellent. Hey, look at that. All leveled up. Despite all the city's troubles, the statue of Iamade tiles proudly over the city. And that's the way down. We'll go there later, but not right now. I don't remember what this is. Level four, is it? Let's see. See the level three or level four? We're level four. Excellent. And I'm focusing on dexterity. And I've got these three skills. And that's it. And then you, level four. You're focusing on strength. And you've got these five skills. And that's it. Excellent. Well... Yeah, you would also be focused on dexterity. You've got a couple of skills. You've got a hex. What hex did I get? I got devil eye the first time, right? Evil eye, rather. Okay. Um, you know what? I like protective luck. Just in case. That's always nice to have. You. Uh, I think we focus on dexterity for you. Grow sprikes, and you got one land grace, okay. And then you, restless. what do you get at this level? It's been a while since I leveled Eldritch Scoundrel. Hmm, oh, you get uh, new spells, you get blur. And shouldn't you have, oh, you could take uh, glitter dust. Or I could actually take magic mirror, which like a little bit more. And then you, what does Stigmatized Witch get? Charisma goes up. Yep, those skills go up. Uh, you don't need Nana's Arcana. Nina will take care of that. We'll go with, go with religion for you. Uh, take Evil Life for sure. And then I guess you can also have Winter's Grass. I don't remember this. Ice across the ground, radiating supernatural cold and making it difficult for creatures to maintain their balance. Thus, icy ground is treated as difficult terrain. 
And they are take 1d6 points of cold damage each round and suffer a negative 2 penalty on saving throws. Huh. Isn't that interesting? Oh, I remember Scare being very effective as well. We're not going to worry about that. Uh, I think I'll have you take Glitter Does. Um, yeah, because we're going to have Nanio coming in soon. She can handle the other ones. Um, all right, Buck B. Uh, oh, no, got to go Intelligence. Got to go Intelligence. Uh, level 3 in Intelligence unlocks a ton of feats for pets, so it's an absolute must to have. Um, oh, is this me? you? Right, okay. What is this? Sneak attack. Uh, yep, AC penalty. That's exactly what I want. Cool, that sounds good. Um, we will win this war. Okay. Pull that back in, and we are good to keep going. Ysila, why? What's on your A mind? Bright future. Uh, why did you get out of there? I did not tell you to do that. Okay. Together, we stand. Pick that up. Yep. Did I miss anything else back here? Nope, it doesn't look like it. Pick this up. Excellent. I found this, in case uh, you didn't know, is Terrendalus Bloodstain. Nice and gory. A rift in the earth left by Descar's massive scythe. You and your companions fell through here during the attack. Bumpy ride. Judging by the size of the bloodstain, the body of something truly enormous was dragged over these stones. Terrendalev, most likely. I mean, damn. That is rough. It's, it's not enough that you done already beat my ass. Now you gotta drag my corpse and do something foul with it? The, thank the gods! I found someone who is fleeing in a panic! Are you crusaders? Mercenaries? The comely half-elf is so frightened he can barely get the words out. I'm a servant of Count Darren Kale Nevis Arende. My lord's mansion is under attack by demons. The master himself and all his guests are trapped inside, and the cross guards are nowhere to be found. I managed to escape through a servant's passage to look for help. Uh, will you help me? The mansion is only a stone's throw away on the next street over. He meets your gaze with pleading eyes. Count Arende. I have seen him a few times before, from afar. He looked highly audacious. I confess that he did capture my attention, but that's neither here nor there. We should help him. The gratitude of a rich and influential man can only benefit us. You have heard about the Arende family before. This wealthy and noble Mendevian dynasty was almost wiped out by demons more than 10 years ago. The last surviving member of the family, the young Count Darren, has an infamous reputation. He is well known for being a rake and a rogue. Misfortune continues to dog the house of Arende, I see. The servant cringes. You're telling me everyone tried to talk me out of taking up the position, saying it can't have just been bad luck that brought tragedy down on the family and almost killed off the line. But I reasoned that since my master was the only one to survive that calamity, that meant he must be blessed by fate and the powers of good. The pay was nothing to sniff at either. The servant casts his eyes around the street. I should have listened to people smarter than me and going to work somewhere else, preferably far away from Kennebrus. Tell me more about what happened. I'll tell you what I can. I was working from dusk till dawn and back to dusk again, serving guests at the Count's banquet. When the other servants came to relieve me at my post, I went to sleep. Next thing I know, I wake up and there are demons inside the mansion. I couldn't even reach the Count. The monsters had blocked the way. The Count's banquet was still going on. He and his guests were in the great hall and as far as I could tell, the door to the room was sealed and the demons couldn't get in. I'm begging you, hurry. The mansion's doors are sturdily built. The demons will have to work hard to get past them so you still have time to rescue the people inside. What will I get if I help this Count of yours? Demanding a reward for fighting demons? That is dishonorable and foolish, too, since demons are the enemy of each and every one of us. Today, we selflessly help someone to thrash the demons, and tomorrow, someone else will help us. From Isaac's perspective, he's going to do it regardless. He's going to do it even without a reward. But the pride in him says, if I can be rewarded for this service, why not take a reward? Why leave it there? There's nothing dishonorable about it. I'm sure the Count will reward you handsomely for any rescue. All right, I'll help. Where's your master's house? 
It's not far at all. You're better off entering the next street over, through the passes I used to get out. I help. I'm begging you. I hate to think what the Count will do to me if I don't bring back help. <laughs> All right. Boom. Doo -doo -doo. Let's continue on. What's down here? I don't even remember. Oh, okay. This is blocked off. Cool. So you got to go up here. Godspeed. Might be trapped. Might be treasure. Excellent. Mm. Hear me. Take heed. The hordes of the abyss march on Kenebris. The war zone is their target. They must not be allowed to catch it. The consequences will be disastrous. Who was that? Man, look who popped up. The golden coiled Asimar greets you with a graceful bow. So, you found me. I have nowhere else to run. I am at your mercy. Kill me if you wish, but I ask you, hear me out first. Obviously, the lawful thing would be for me to just go ahead and tack him as a traitor, but again, Isaac isn't really cons uh, convinced that Holron is on the right side of this, so he does want to hear Ramian out. Did you really know about the demon attack before it happened? I did. We have a secret ally in the enemy's ranks. No one knows who this brave soul is, but she has been feeding us information about the demon's plans. These dispatches have come to us by the most reliable channel bestowed upon us by the great dreamer herself. They have come to us in dreams. Prelate Hallron brushed them off as meaningless reveries. And, well, I admit that it isn't always easy to distinguish our allies' messages from ordinary dreams. But even ordinary dreams are gifts from Desna and are always worthy of attention. The prelate, and all the crusade leaders for that matter, should have put less store in reason and more in intuition, inspiration, and spontaneity. The longer this coward blathers on, the more I want to give in to inspiration and spontaneously knock his teeth out. <laughs> What's more, not long before the attack on the city, a blind elf who calls himself the Storyteller arrived in Kenebris. This wanderer wasn't merely a collector of legends, but a scholar of the unknown. According to him, the Wardstone in our city, the first and most important in the chain of Wardstones, weakened since long ago, was teetering on the brink of corruption. It seems that the Red Morning Massacre and other demon attacks, even the ones we fended off, did not leave us unscathed. Unfortunately, the prelate did not wish to listen to the storyteller either. We're lucky he wasn't burnt at the stake as a heretic. We had such vital information on our hands, information that could have saved the city, but no one cared to listen all the way to the catastrophic end. Not all dreams have benign origins. What if those dreams were sent by demons? In a different time and place, someone perhaps could have become the victim of false dreams sent by monsters. But here, in the war with the Abyss, the goddess is keeping a close eye on our most faithful followers. I have no doubt that if a demon tried to intrude upon the dreams of any one of us, Desna's punishment would have been swift. Tell me about the strange rituals that were going to be performed on the Wardstone. Ramian looked slightly abashed. When my attempts to open Horon's eyes ended in failure, a few of my young adepts resolved to take matters into their own hands. They did not consult me before doing so, but I have never demanded iron discipline from my priest. Army commanders may have subordinates, but I have pupils and fellow worshippers. I can only inspire them. I cannot command them, and it seems they were inspired all on their own. They had no ill intent. They only wished to access the Wardstone in secret and try to cleanse it. But to Holron, this became perform a suspect ritual after hearing even more suspect voices in their dreams. The children wanted to save their city, but the Inquisitors detained them and almost killed them. I had to intervene. I used my authority and my power as a cleric to give them a chance to flee. If they hadn't got away, they were destined for a cell in the prelate's dungeons and, quite likely, death. Why are you and Holron feuding? 
Oh, I'm not feuding with him. I sincerely wish only the best for the man. In an ideal world, he'd be far away from the front lines, enjoying a peaceful retirement. But even if that isn't possible, I have always tried to help him fulfill the mission he has taken upon himself, and to which he has proved fatally ill-suited, protecting Kenebris against the demons. Unfortunately, he is convinced that the followers of Desna are heretics and saboteurs. He refused to listen to me, and it was only the knightly orders that deterred him from including us in his witch hunt. Now there is clearly no one left to stand in his way. He is finally free to get rid of us once and for all. Um, no, he sees Halron as a man of the law, so he's not going to recommend killing him. Is there a chance you can resolve your conflict? I don't know. Halron's faith is truly formidable, not only his faith in Iomade, but in his own infallibility. In other words, he's as hard-headed as a rock troll. But even so, Desna teaches us never to lose hope. Talk to him. Try to explain that we are fighting on the same side. If he attacks you, disarm him, bind his hands. But I beg you, if at all possible, please do not kill him. Why haven't you left this place for somewhere safer? Because people might need help, and they will come to the temple in search of a priest. I will not hide away in a hole, saving my own neck, while Kenebris is full of people suffering in the wake of the demon's attack. I have to go. Wait! Three of my adepts are hiding somewhere in the ruins of the city, the ones the Inquisitors wrongly accused of treason. I beg you, find them and protect them against the demons and vigilantes like Halron. They will not rest until they find them. If there's anything else you could do to save Kenebris, please do it. Stranger, wait. You spared Ramian despite what the Mad Inquisitor told you. The young voice comes from nowhere. Oh, uh, hang on. I forgot to remove the spell. I hope Holron's dogs aren't lurking nearby. A pale youth materializes before you. His face looks haggard from lack of sleep, but he is clearly pleased to be speaking to someone. So, you're one of Desna adepts that tried to break into the Wardstone. Yes, I am Ilks, cleric of Desna, and one of the people who answered the, vo the call of the voice in dreams. Some unknown person made contact with us through our dreams, telling us about the demon's plans. We learned that the demons were planning to attack Kenebris and do something terrible to our Wardstone, which already carries the taint of corruption. Prelate Halron refused to heed our warnings. We had to make a choice. We could either throw up our hands and pull back or take action, even though it could cost us our lives. But what heartless person could stand by in the face of such a deadly threat? Lawful. So what? You went up against Halron, but he's the official governor of the city. What of it? Says the cleric with remarkable complacency. Submitting to unworthy leaders is one of the great ills of our civilization. We will never defeat the demons if we keep listening to people like Holron. Only someone who is strong can refuse to submit to strength. Either you are a master, or you are seeking a master to rule over you, or else everyone will end up in your situation, getting themselves killed or hiding in fear. Whose voice have you been hearing in your dreams? Nobody knows what it is, but everyone who has heard it, heard her, I should say, is convinced that she is a good and pure soul chosen by Desna. We had a choice. We could trust her, except that we have an ally, someone who isn't afraid of all the armies of the Abyss, or we could drown in suspicions and get one step closer to becoming just like Holron. We decided to trust the voice, and seeing Kenebris devastated, which is what our unknown ally tried to prevent until the very end. I can see now who had the truth on their side. Where are your fellow worshippers and how many of them are there? Fortunately, or unfortunately, I don't know where they are. We split up to confuse the Inquisitors who were chasing us. Do you need help? Desna teaches us to trust in last ditch chances. Listen, my friends are called Aranka and Thal, Thal the Wallflower. Aranka is an amazing singer and a truly beautiful girl. She has plenty of friends and fans. She's probably blended into a crowd somewhere. Wallflower is a mage, but I don't think he'll risk using magic. It will only bring the Inquisitors down on him. He'll be harder to find. You'd better find Arenka first. She might know where Wallflower is. Please, 
Find them and protect them against the demons and the Inquisitors. I will await news in the Goddess's Temple. I hope our mysterious helper will send us a new message that will reveal what is to come from the demons. So again, Isaac feels like he doesn't have all the information. He's not going to kill him outright. I have to go. Go. May Desna be with you, stranger. Awesome. All right. Um, ooh, I can adopt someone. Let Who are you? On. Tiger. Plus two morale bonus on perception and lore nature checks. Ha uh ha. -huh. Welcome to the family, Tiger. Ooh, there's a... These people were not killed by demons. Their mortal wounds were inflicted by ordinary weapons. I'm going to go on a, on a limb and say we got a, that was a cultist problem. Uh-oh. It's all right. Yeah, stuff doesn't work. I'm probably going to have to rethink about his bit a little bit, but I'm not interested in doing it now. The fact that he can't go two-handed right up front really, really hurts him. But the fact that he can't wear a shield also hurts him. So. Oh, this freaking quest. I remember this. Here. Um. Mm -hmm. He's got 19. He should be. Whoa. He should be up there. He should be down here. Let the tanks go up first, and then he'll come in. Um, we should probably make this turn base because this fight can be brutal. Rely on me. I won't let you there hurt go. my friends. Excellent. Ooh. Ooh. You. I do not appreciate that at all. All right. Um. Actually, I'm. Yeah, this isn't necessary anyway. We're both gonna do it, right? All right. Could have been better. Could have been worse. Why is Ember so close? Here. Um. He's about to be able to attack. Well then, here, we're gonna do some slumber then. Let's see if we can get you to sleep. Ha 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 ha! And we'll come back a little bit. And he's gonna night night. And she will do evil eye. I keep forgetting to use bark skin on my pet. Should have been did that. And let's get you nice and nice and close. And then Windowog is gonna, oh, so now I've leveled up and it took that off. That's interesting. Yeah, somebody mentioned to me it's, bas it's a bug basically with Shifter and it doesn't affect just this Shifter class. It kind of affects like all of them. Very, we, very we interesting. Can we charge to you? Nope, we can't, of course. It's fine though. Here. There we go. And then I know I, you're not going to be able to um, charge either. But, oh, very nice, very nice, very nice. And now she's able to do something, anything, but there's not really anything I want her to do. I guess she'll just take a shot at you. Get on up. There we go. Very nice, very nice, very smooth. That fight can be brutal, especially if he gets the drop on you, man. He has wiped out my whole team before. <laughs> he can, he will do you bad if you let him. It might be a trap. Awesome. All right. If you let him. Not the tip of a dozen. That's not where I want to go. Um. Oh, you need to go further. Here we are. Actually, yeah, let's go ahead and get you fully healed because 
next fight ain't gonna be no punk either all right now we got more to do here but i want to go ahead and get darren so we're gonna uh leave for now and then come back later that gray sword doesn't help us that gray sword doesn't help us no 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 oh that might help us yep that composite longbow definitely help us this yep just looks pretty but that's cheap okay cool we're good so yeah, I'm definitely tired of being without a healer. We're not going to respect Darren yet to his permanent class. I'm going to keep him um, uh, where he is until um, we can get uh, Sela into her paladin class. Um, so now we're going to go south. We're going to clear out all of this. Then we're going to come back up north, clear up everything in Market Square. Then we clear up everything in the north, and then hopefully if we do that enough time, we jump back to Defender's Heart, and we're all good. Hopefully that works. It worked before, but you know, I don't know what patches have done and all that, so. Who's this? Oh, Nanio. I forgot about Nanio. Holy smokes, so we're actually picking out two party members. Which brings up a good question, actually. Who do I want to replace? Well, actually... Actually, no, I'll just place, uh, I'll replace Wolgif and Nanio with Darren and, um, with Darren, Wolgif and Ember with Darren and Nanio. That works. Pretty sure this is Nanio, at least. What's that there? My tail is twitching. Must be a Just sign. trying to remember all the mechanics that I need to make sure I have access to. But now with Camellia has Evil Eye, so I'm good on that. Uh, I'm pretty sure Nanio will be able to pick up Glitter Dust. And then for him, um, Nanio will be able to have Grease as well. So yeah, I should be good. I should be good. <laughs> I know some of you are irritated by Nanio. I think she's hilarious. Baphomet symbol around the neck? Check. Crazy eyes? Check. Note to self, bring a mirror next time to be able to adjust the optimal level of eye craziness. Everything is ready for the experiment. An audience. Problematic, but not critical. You there, boy. Stay out of this. It is counterproductive to stand in the way of scientific progress. What? <laughs> Who's that? I don't know her. Greetings, boys and girls. I am your sister in sin, a devotee of Lord Baphomet's <laughs> dark will, and so on and so forth. <laughs> she looks like one of us, but she talks kind of weird. Who's there with you? Who? Oh, them. Just an audience. They don't matter. Consider them a supplementary component of the coming experiment. Shrug, remaining silent. In the name of our Lord Baphomet, please be so kind as to undertake a little test of your competency in our wicked cause. Let's start with something <laughs> simple. So here's my first question. What is Lord Baphomet's favorite weapon? We will not answer to you. Our Lord can wield any kind of weapon. He is all-powerful. Wrong. He wields no weapons at all. He doesn't need any. He just gores his enemies with his horns. Ha <laughs> ha Say nothing. These answers are wrong. The correct answer is Isergal, a glaive made of red adamantine. This experiment has taken quite a surprising turn. I would never have expected the followers of the great Baphomet to be baffled by such a simple question. Fine. Let's recalibrate the difficulty and proceed with the next question. Please name Lord Baphomet's sacred animal. A bull! Of course everybody knows that. Yep. And a cow. It's an Aurox, as a matter of fact. I'd like to ask you to stop prompting them, but it seems they could do with a prompt or two. <laughs> it appears the experiment has yielded results which are as unexpected as they are incredible. Baphomet's cultists have not the slightest idea about who Baphomet really is, let alone any in-depth knowledge of his ideology or philosophy. I'm positive that this news will cause a sensation in widest scientific circles. <laughs> Damn it! She's right. I'm a shitty excuse for a cultist. And my mother used to tell me to become a plowman. Hey, take it easy! We've only had two questions. 
You there, come on, ask another one. We'll get the next one. Say nothing. Is there any sense in continuing? You cannot answer the simplest of questions. I am ashamed of all of you, as cultists and as individuals. <laughs> as individuals. Please, ask again. I can answer, I'm sure I can. <sighs> How do you spell Baphomet's name? B A F. Wow. Oh, screw it. To hell with Baphomet. I thought it was going to be fun, but instead there are all these questions. I'm done here. I'm going back to my home village, back to my mother. <laughs> hey, wait. You there. How dare you stir up discord in our ranks? Grab her and tie her up and her entire entourage too. The experiment is complete. Unable to deal with the questions, the cultists decide to deal with the examiner instead. A typical reaction for a person who has never been burdened with any intelligence. <laughs> now you're gonna start hitting each other, aren't you? Please, proceed. I won't interrupt. Nadio's so awesome. Um, do I need... Do I need a pause? Archer, sharpshooter, barbarian, fighter? No. Whoa! Why am I missing someone? That's not good. And I'm getting shredded. Oh my god, are you kidding me? That was a mistake. I didn't realize it was I didn't realize Sila was being held back like that. Oh, it's probably hold on. Is the problem? No, it's not a formation issue. The formation has the bird up front the way it's where it's supposed to be. <sighs> An audience. Problematic, but not Um, kind. what? When I get Darren, well, actually, when we get to the next quest after Darren, I'll apply around the buffs that will help with uh, his protection. Oh, Just an audience. This will be matter. fine if, um... Wrong. Oh, it gave me the Isagall, uh, um, I religious check this easy. time. Defeat is not an option. Oh, I just did it again. Here, let's do this. There we go. That's fine. Let's do this, in fact. That'll probably help. Um, do not let's see what happens. What is this? Sacred, oh, sacred weapon. Okay, cool. That was allowing me to do sacred weapon primary hand. And view the power of granite. Oh, yeah, sure. And, yep, this will definitely help. Let's get all these people down on the floor. Good enough. And then she... Go ahead... Make sure it's easy to get through him. And then she... Oh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Um, yeah, she'll deal with that person back on the way back there. Excellent. And then she. I'll cut you wide open. Miss, isn't that lovely? Ah, window off. Shred him. What? I was about to say. Girl, if you don't make it happen. Excellent. And yep. Strike as one. Cover me, all right. Excellent. Um, uh, she does fire on that grease. Is probably going to light the whole thing up, so she's going to avoid that. Um, and she's not going to do that either. Too late for apologies. Into the fray. Excellent. Can you, yep, can you finish? Actually, here. Let's the make sure that that guy gets up. 
Yeah, let, let's worry about the ones that are not next to the griffin. There we go. Yep. That's much more helpful. Yep, go ahead, get up. Oh, really? She missed both of them? That's unfortunate. There we go. Zap you or zap you. Why not both? Excellent. Boom, boom, boom. And you may have gotten up the first time, but you're dead now. <laughs> the absence of an answer is an answer, too. And walks off. <laughs> so straight. That's so awesome. The result is statistically predictable, especially considering their intelligence level. What about you, boy? Are you ready to answer some questions for the good of science? Let's proceed with the experiment. My first question is simple. Which colors does the goddess Iomade prefer? You're absolutely convinced that the correct answer is red and white. Red and white. This answer is correct. It is comforting to meet at least one educated person in the melting pot of ignorance that is Canabras today. Let's proceed. Did Aradin take part in any crusade before he died? You know for sure that Aradin died not long before the world wound opened and the first crusade began. Wait a minute, what? Did he take part in any crusade before he died? Not long before the and the first crusade. So no, he didn't. Your answer is correct. Aradin's death dates to 4606, and that is precisely the year when the world wound was opened. The first crusade started back in 4622. Your knowledge would make Mendev's crusaders proud. My final question is, what is the title that a really Vorlesh bears? Is she the architect of the world wound, the lord of the labyrinth, or the border inquisitor of the shapeless abyss? <laughs> you are positive that a really Vorlesh is known as the architect of the world wound. The architect of the world wound. That's correct. Most excellent. You successfully answered all of my questions. Splendid. Amazing. This is a breakthrough. This... Oh, I thank you for your cooperation. It seems to me that I owe you an explanation. My name is Nenio. I am an explorer, a pilgrim, a yet-to-be-recognized scientific luminary, future author of the Great Encyclopedia Galarianica, and rector of all Absalom's universities at once. Future rector, I should say. I also know several spells. Now, can you tell me what you are getting at with all those questions? It is so heartening to see you strive for knowledge. I have been conducting an experiment comparing the intellectual abilities of the average cultist with those of the average crusader. And I must admit that you passed the test with flying colors. This does offer a glimmer of hope for the future of Crusade. I have always claimed that despite the popular beliefs about the limited intellectual abilities of those in the army, at least some of them can be considered educated. It pleases me to see that I was correct. So you're trying to say that I am mediocre? Yes. <laughs> Why do you keep calling me boy? I have a name, you know. I apologize for an injury to your ego, but your name is irrelevant on the grand scale of the universe. Thus, it cannot possibly interest me. I will forget it as soon as I hear it. To avoid unnecessary confusion, I prefer to not know it at all. <laughs> Kenabras, this is safe right now. Shall we join forces? Do you wish to become my follower? To accompany me on my expeditions to the world wound? To assist me in my experiments? To run errands for me? Perhaps even to write down my deepest thoughts for the benefit of future generations? Oh, how splendid! Of course, I agree. Truth be told, I have no money to pay you. But you will be aiding the progress of science, and that is its own reward. Isaac is used to dealing with nobles and uh, <laughs> their own sense of self-importance, despite the fact that they're completely dependent upon him for protection. So he's not really caught off guard by uh, Nenio's uh, candor here. If we join forces, you'll have to follow my instructions during our expeditions. Huh? What? Oh, yes, the dangers and these battles. Of course, I will follow your orders. I place my life in your capable hands so I can focus on the things that really matter. Hey, I agree. Excellent. You're hired. To think that I finally found someone to accompany me. 27 crusaders before you said no. Not one of them saw the undeniable appeal of my offer. Your first assignment is to take me to a safe place. I have to admit that today's experiment has left me quite tired. <laughs> All right, we're going to take out Ember. 
She's not really part of our future plans. And we'll bring in Nanio. Excellent. And let's turn this off. This sound was starting to annoy me anyway. Nanio is absolutely a part of our permanent plans for the group. Oops. And well, nice. Jake, why don't you go ahead and take this off so that none of, nobody else falls down. There we go. And that and let's pick that up what's the deal yep yep we'll take that and yep how much is this yep 100 that's low that's low yep we'll take that we'll take that and nothing else what's in here that searching searching all right Anything over here? No. Alright. Give me a second. Let me pull up Nanio's build. So I know what I'm supposed to do with her. Because her stuff is a little bit wacky. Um, Nanio. There we are. And she gets 20 points. Okay. Pull up this, pull up this. Nanio. Nanio gets 20 points. We're kind of low for a party member, honestly. I'm, I'm not sure what the reasoning is for that. But, well, I guess because she's not a mongrel, maybe. It seems like, well, no, because Sila got a ridiculous amount of points, too. So, yeah, just all the way around. I don't know what the reasoning is for that. All right. Uh, we are going to go with, where is that freaking thing? Is it Wizard? This wizard, right? Yes, we're gonna go with Shadowcaster. Uh, it gives you a bunch of spells. Most of them are mediocre. I'm not gonna focus on the shadow spells, even though that's what it gives you a ton of. Um, this is just so I can play around with a new class. The cool thing about this is um, it does give you some blind sign. That's irrelevant. Uh, it allows you to summon a shadow. The shadow is gonna get. Um, uh, profane bonuses to dexterity, charisma, AC, attack rolls. It's going to attack different things. How effective is this shadow? How good is it at attacking the enemies that we have? I have no idea. But in addition, we're also going to get profane bonuses to our intelligence ability scores. Um, and it's going to have a plus five profane bonus by level 20. So there, or rather by level 18. So very, very nice there. Uh, uh, there is a capstone ability here, but we're actually never going to get it. It allows you to turn it to a shadow that gets a plus two bonus to intelligence and you can cast spells and have the effects of the transformation spell while you're in that shadow. But we're never going to see it because we're actually going to um, kind of bounce in and out of this. So um, first we'll go here. Um, dexterity and intelligence, right? Yep. Dexterity and intelligence. Now we're going to dump strength all the way to five, and then we're going to bring dexterity all the way to 20. We'll put one point in intelligence, uh, in constitution rather. We're going to completely dump charisma, and then we're going to bring intelligence up to 18. Because remember, we're going to get five points from leveling up, and then we're going to get another five points from shadow caster. So usually you would want your ability point to be an odd number. In this case, it makes sense for it to be an even number. And obviously the, the 20 in dexterity gives us that plus five modifier to initiative, which is gonna be really helpful to make sure that um, Nadio, who is our crowd control specialist, can get out in front of battles as quickly as possible. Now she's gonna be responsible for our knowledge and our world. Um, our knowledge and our lore um, skills, obviously. And for her first feat, we are going to go spell focus enchantment. So I'm going to use this this uh, build as an opportunity to do two things that I've always wanted to do in Wrath of the Righteous, but never had the opportunity to do. One of them is I've always wanted to have somebody who specializes in enchantment. And I've just never been able to resist going all in on illusion instead. This time we're going to resist it. I'm going to um, really, really focus hard on enchantment. So we're going to take that. And then for the wizard bonus feat, we're going to go with spell penetration. And now for our main school, again, it's going to be enchantment. 
And then for our op schools, we are going to go with transmutation and necromancy. She has very few spells that fill either one of those gaps. All right, now for beginning spells, obviously she wants magic missile. She'll take shield, she'll take grease. Um, she will take hypnotism. Um, she will take magic missile. Um, she will take true strike and she would take summon monster. I think that's pretty much everything that I would want her to have. Yeah, I think that about does it. Um, next complete. And where is she at? Um, all right, level two. Oops. Now, this is where I know I'm going to make many, 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 many of you cringe. <laughs> but again, I want to use this as an opportunity to do some things I've always wanted to do. I never got a chance to do, and this might as well be the time. I'm going to take a moment to dip into Sorcerer. This is going to completely stunt the progression of my spell casting. This is a, definitely a big, big no-no, but I'm going to go ahead and do it because it's what I want to do. The reason I want to do it, something else I've never really had the opportunity to do, but I always wanted to, was to take the Undead Bloodline. I've always wanted to play someone who specializes in enchantment and also has Undead Bloodline Arcana, which allows you to cast mind-affecting spells on the Undead. That always sounded so freaking cool to me. Always wanted to be able to play around with it more. Never had a playthrough where I could do it. So we're going to do it here. And I'd like her to have this functionality right from the start. Now, we also get a bonus feat here. I will go ahead and take, what am I taking? Um, greater spell focus, enchantment, to be even more sure that all my mind affecting spells will hit like a Mack truck. And then for the second bloodline, we'll take Fae which is going to give us a plus two to the DC of any spells that fit into the compulsion school, sub school, which a lot of my spells will, so that works very nicely. Um, and then I get one additional spell. Kind of doesn't matter um, what I take here. It's whatever I want additional cast of. You know what? We'll go ahead and take reduced person here. I didn't want to take a transmutation spell under wizard because that didn't make sense but reduced person makes sense here and there's a couple of people i could potentially use it for all right now level three um we will go back to wizard and shadow caster it's like they're reading my mind um we will go back and take our skills and now we have another feat we will take one of the new feats actually ambuscading spell Anytime I am able to catch opponents flat-footed, they're going to take a negative two penalty on saving throws against spells that I cast. Very, very useful for obvious reasons. Um, now we get another spell, another couple of spells, and I guess we'll also take Incendiary Runes, which is another um, new spell that will allow us to deal 1d6 points of fire damage to every creature within 10 feet um, when we detonate the rune. And we also automatically get vanished, so that's cool as well. And then we get one more uh, level. We'll go ahead and start increasing intelligence. We'll take our four skills. And then we get another two um, spells. So we'll take Hideous Laughter. And then we'll take uh, Glitter Dust. So we have that. And then if we look... Um, everybody should have more spell slots, right? So let's go ahead and check that. He's, he's got these spell slots here. What does he get? Effortless armor is nice. Um, you know what? Yeah, we keep uh, getting impacted, so I feel like I should have Restoration Lesser, even though I really prefer to use scrolls for that, but we'll keep it here for now. Um, all right, Bark Skin. We've actually got more than two people who can make use of bar skin, so we'll add another for that. And we keep using all that healing, so might as well add some more for that. Um, at level two, um, do I want to give him mirror image? I kind of do, but yeah, you know, fine. We'll give him mirrors. It's fine. And then uh, let's see for wizard uh, favorite school hypnotism. 
and add another rank in hypnotism why not oh actually here let's say one hypnotism one grease and then hideous laughter for sure one in glitter dust another hideous laughter okay and then she's yep she's shooting with a bow that's fine and there are no other items that are really going to help her so she's good all right save again and let's be off speed anything here that i missed shouldn't be nope let's go um so where were we in the middle of now <laughs> it's been so long i feel like i forgot oh yeah yeah we're going to get darren let's do that enter there's an achievement for finishing this fight in a certain way that i've actually never been able to get and I'm not going to be able to get it now either because I'm not in the mood Let to try to go through on. the Mickey Mouse. But I, I, I'll explain what it is in a minute. You all, most of you probably already know it anyway. If you all, if, if, if uh, you know the achievement and you've already gotten it and you've got like specific strategies that you feel like really work to make it happen, let me know what they are. Can we retreat already? Distract them for me. Excellent. I was afraid they were going to double cast that damn poison cloud on me and this was going to be another battle that took forever. All right. Um, oops, not load. Here we go. What a splendid occasion, Count. And this new Numerian elixir is quite something. Uh oh. Oh, look. Such darling little creatures. Ah! I just smell beauty. They're, they're dead as hell. Wonderful. Now brace yourselves for the smell of your own blood, you ghastly eyesore. So there's an achievement for killing all the demons without any of the civilians going down. Which, uh, frankly, I've never been able to get. Uh-oh. Yeah, see, it's very, very easy for the, uh... It's very easy for the civilians to go down, for sure. There we go. All right, we're good. Ooh, love fighting those champions. Rosh Hashir. So I think about two or three of the nobles went down on this. It went Portrait of Galfrey Bendev, ruler of the kingdom and founder of all crusades into the world wound. You can trust me. A success worthy of praise. The intricate patterns on the heart depict the stars, the moon, and butterflies, the hallmarks of the goddess Desna. Thank you, stranger. The young woman does not look at the least bit scared. Her cheeks are flushed and her blue eyes are glittering. For saving us from the demons and for your timely entrance, I swear, I don't know who has enraged me more today, the demons or the old so affable master of this house. I am a friend of Ilk's. He asked me to find you and protect you. The young woman claps her hands together. Ilks is alive, and he's made a brilliant new friend. It's a shame it had to happen now when the city is under siege by the demons and those pig-headed inquisitors are pursuing us instead of doing something useful. How did you end up here? 
Haran's hounds found me at Wallflower and tried to capture us. I distracted them. Then I lost them in the streets before charming my way into this party. Even if the Inquisitors saw where I went, they wouldn't have been allowed past the door. Haran holds no sway among certain members of the aristocracy. And so I picked a good place to lie low. That is, until a demon showed up. She shivers and wraps her arms around herself. Do you know where the third of your group is? Wallflower? No idea. If he knows about the demon attack, he won't just hide away. He'll go out and try to help people. If he doesn't know, well, you have no chance of finding him. He's a pretty skilled mage, but I doubt he'll risk using magic. He'll probably do something the Inquisitors won't expect. Pose as someone. Disguise himself. We had a great selection of masquerade costumes in the temple. She becomes lost in thought for a moment. I know. I'll tie my shawl around your arm. Wallflower gave it to me. He'll spot it right away and know your friend. If I were you, I'd look for him in Kennebra's Market Square. Tell me about yourself. I'm Arenka, traveling bard and follower of Desna. Many of my fellow bards are rootless mythsits who wander the world, unwilling or unable to live a normal life. For me, that's only partly true. I have a wonderful family, my mother, father, grandmother, and brother. Right now they are far away, and I'm sure they miss me. But they have always supported me in my vocation, and they let me be free to roam. Because they knew that I couldn't be happy while there's so much of the world I hadn't explored, and so many people, and so many places where people might need my help. What can you tell me about the master of the house? About the count? Her voice drops to a whisper. I've wanted to smash a jug over his head about five times today already. He just brings the feeling out in people. It's one of his many talents. Other than that, well, you've probably already heard about the Arende family. All I can say is that the Count's servants flee this place like rats from a sinking ship. No one ever stays here long, even though he pays them extravagantly. I even heard one servant complain that he always feels uneasy in the Count's home, like someone is watching him, unseen eyes staring at the back of his head, even if his back is to the wall, even if he turns around. I don't know if I believe all these tales, but I'm just telling you what I've heard. Yeah, that's the word on the street too. The tiefling hunches his shoulders. This mansion is the tastiest morsel in the whole city, but all the thieves are afraid to even set foot in the street. Why did you decide to break into the wardstone and cast magic on it? You put your lives at risk. Your information could have been a trap set up by the demons. But it wasn't a demon trap, Arenka says forcefully. Then her voice softens and her expression turns pensive. You know, living next to the war womb and seeing the powerlessness of the crusaders it's very hard. We've been trying to defeat the demons for a hundred years now, and we have nothing to show for it. I think that Queen Galfrey and the other leaders think that we can defeat evil if we line up our soldiers in perfect columns and send them marching off with a stirring battle cry. We just need a few more soldiers, a little more discipline, but we've been marching for a hundred years, and it's always one step forward, two steps back. And while the soldiers are marching, people like Holron are seizing power behind their backs. His fanaticism and cruelty were forged in the same furnace as the Crusaders' righteousness. We will never defeat the demons if we keep trying to march down the same path. We need to change tack, to challenge our principles, trust our hearts and our friends, not moldering doctrines. We need to listen to an entity that is willing to help us. My friends and I listened, and we trusted, and we tried to change something. At least we tried, even though it didn't work out. Naive children, that's what you are. But I admit, your words store something in my soul. I wouldn't put you in charge of a military campaign, <laughs> but I'd be proud to fight alongside you. <laughs> Can you get somewhere safe on your own? It looks like the Inquisitors aren't bursting down the door just yet, and they're not hiding under the bed, so I think I'm safe for now. I'll be fine on my own. I'll go to our temple, to Ilks. The Inquisitors must have searched there by now. They won't go back a second time. I have to go. Good luck. May Desna be with you, stranger. And finally, Darren. Greetings, valiant stranger who has just burst into my life. I am the master of this house. Count Darren Kale, myriad mellifluous monikers Arunde. No need to introduce yourself. I find remembering insignificant details, such as the name of passing acquaintances, such a bore. Now that we've finished <laughs> with the niceties, tell me this. How did all those thrice-damned demons end up at my soiree? Kenebris lies in ruins. Daskari killed Terendalev. The Wardstone has been captured. And you're asking me why demons gatecrashed your party? Kenebris in ruins? Daskari? 
Well, well, well. And I was already lamenting the lack of excitement at my little banquet. Although it must have been tolerable enough if we didn't get notice of a great hulking demon attacking a dragon just outside the window. It seems as though Discari's occasion was altogether more of a crush than mine. Hmm. If you will pardon the pun. What should I know about you, Count? Apart from the fact that you're high-born and very rich? As a child, I had my very own pony. But I always dreamed of having a lamb. I was never allowed one. Sheep were seen as peasant animals, utterly unsuitable for the scion of a noble line. The trauma haunts me to this day. <laughs> I think of it every time I have roast lamb for dinner. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm sorry if I failed to sate your curiosity. I loathe talking about myself to people I don't know, even more to those I do know. The only thing worth knowing, aside from the fact that I am highborn and filthy rich, is that I dislike Puritans and demons in equal measure. Well, perhaps demons a tad more. You don't seem very concerned about the city's fate. I have no friends here whose untimely demise I would care to mourn. The only alarming thing is how easily all this happened. I don't care for the thought that demons could come calling at my door at any moment. And just think, everyone had so much faith in the ward stones gifted by Iomade's herald and in the might of our tamed dragon. As if there had been no Dresden or a dozen other routes where the demons overcame every defense. The Count falls silent and rubs his brow, looking fatigued. The Arendes are one of the most ancient and noble families in Mendiv. They are related by blood to Queen Galfrey herself. The Count is the last remaining member of his dynasty. The rest all perished around ten years ago. In the tragedy at the family seat, Heaven's Edge, the demons got past the defenses and massacred everyone inside. I thank you for providing your friend with that helpful summary, my lady. <laughs> I believe I've seen you before with that hilarious buffoon, Horgus Gworm. I sincerely hope you are not engaged in any kind of sordid arrangement with him. The thought of something so splendid in proximity to something so grotesque makes me feel quite ill. You deserve a better fate than that, no doubt. Your civility knows no bounds, Count. I most assuredly do not have any arrangement with <laughs> Master Worm. <laughs> I expect a little gratitude for saving you. Of course, of course, where are my manners? There. You can also poke about the house and claim whatever takes your fancy. Though I imagine some of you already had that in mind. I actually appreciated the way Darren immediately was like, yes, of course, payment, no problem. <laughs> like, he's really not cheap at all. I'm feeling very attacked right now. <laughs> you could go to the Defender's Heart. It's under the protection of Erebith Tirabate and the Eagle Watch. I thank you for the invitation, but I am not quite as desperate as I may seem. At times, it is better to be surrounded by the repugnant mugs of demons than the sour and dour physiognomies of Iomade's righteous paladins. What about my physiognomy? Sour <laughs> enough for his lordship? Don't worry, another few minutes with the dazzling count here, and it'll sour like weak old milk. What's this? An attractive paladin with a sense of humor? You're a veritable walking scandal. <laughs> Either way, my mansion is now safe. I have a pair of half-decent guards. I just need to drag them out of the storeroom and bring them to their senses. I ordered them to drink a love potion, you see? For reasons which seemed extremely witty at the time and in the state of inebriation I then found myself in. They can guard the house while the valorous paladins beat back the demon assault. They will beat them back, yes? Hmm. As regards myself, I feel like stretching my legs. I know rudimentary divine spells, I am no friend to demons, and I elevate any society that I deign to grace with my presence. I shall accompany you, only for a short time, of course. I have no desire to remain at the vanguard for a protracted period. What say you, my ephemeral but highly diverting acquaintance? After all, Lord Descari spoiled my party. I now burn with the desire to spoil his. Thoughts? I don't like this guy much at all. Not even because of his personality, but just 
I sense something dark about him. He's handsome. <laughs> Having a spellcaster in the party is always useful, too. If he's strong, he'll make a good ally. If he's weak, he will die instead of us. Don't ask me. Having him tag along would be like going for a nighttime stroll through the back alleys with a diamond tiara on your head. Even I don't like that kind of attention. The Count's presence can only benefit us. I think we should say yes. Hmm? Huh? What? You're asking about whether to take this boy with you? The question lies outside the bounds of my interest. By the way, did you know that the young scions of noble families often sponsor the research of young scientists? What laudable passion for knowledge. True, the size of their donations bears a direct correlation to the hazardousness of the experiment being conducted. <laughs> he doesn't look like a whiner, and he can hold his own, so he won't be dead weight. Oh wow, even Finian chimes in on this? I don't remember that. Nice. Deal. Capital. Good acquaintances that begin and end at just the right moment often leave the most pleasant memories. <laughs> Wouldn't you say? <laughs> All right. Well, Jeff, it was nice knowing you. But it's time to let you go. Uh -huh. Anything for you. And what all this? What is this? Oh, to jump back. Okay, and let's save here. We picked him up. He's got a uh, level. Sure. Uh, you use charisma. Sounds good. You got a few skills. None of them I care about. What do you get from here? What's Oracle's burden? Target creature suffers all the hindrances and none of the benefits of your Oracle's curse class feature. Huh. That's interesting. Um, nothing. What do I? What does he already have? Bless shield of faith. Yeah, that's more of the stuff we'll probably end up using. Oh, this is his first entry into spell level two. That's what it is. Um, I guess he could use bone shaker every so often. That wouldn't be half bad. Um, yeah, because I'm pretty sure he automatically gets access to cure minor wounds, right? Doesn't he automatically? Need to be broken. Um, yeah, he's got cure model wounds. Okay, cool. Um, and channel energy. Whoo! I have missed having that. Come on now, you can do a little bit better. Ah, that's good enough for now. Okay. All right. Finally got Darren. Progress being made. Let's go ahead and leave. And now we can go deal with Horgus Grum's problem. Yeah, isn't that next up? Yeah, that's that's what's next. Or I could, you know, no, we're gonna go straight here. Enter. I remember this uh, this sequence being very difficult, but I don't remember why. Hopefully, it goes smoothly though. We'll see. Uh, Worm mission. Horgus. Ah, there you are. At last. You certainly took your time. I thought perhaps you got lost in the way here. I was already regretting not drawing you a map. Horgus' relief is palpable, even though it is grousing. It's a tragedy to see one's house in such a sorry state. And I always had a few guards in my service, you know. I hope those blockheads died honorably and didn't simply flee at the first sign of danger. Orgus turns toward the corridor with a pensive expression on his face. My manor, you see, contains several items that are of great value to me. I wish to retrieve them before I discover it by my fellow citizens, who in the current chaos seem to have taken a thieving and marauding like ducks to water. So here's what I want you to do. Take a stroll through my house, peek into the rooms, and if you find anyone, kill them on the spot. That'll teach any other opportunities to stay away from Horgus Gwern's manor. While I was standing here by the entrance, I could clearly hear the sound of someone rooting away inside. All in any possessions of mine you find in there, you can keep. It's all as good as lost to me anyway. When you're sure the house is empty, give me a signal from my study window. Wave a torch around or something like that. You can decide when you get there. I've done many things in my life, but playing the part of an intrepid mercenary rummaging through someone else's 
tastelessly decorated and poorly planned mansion is a novelty to me. How droll. Ah, uh, I deeply regret that you had to participate in this, my dear Count. Ah, uh, come now, I love a good caper, even when the setting offends my aesthetic sensibilities. What are these valuable items that they're worth risking your life by going back to the manor? Never you mind. I'm paying you to clear out the ruffians inside, not to ask questions. Horgus glares at you for a few seconds before dropping his gaze. Uh, in any case, you will learn what this is all about just as soon as you clear the way to, to me for my study. So, restrain your curiosity for now. You're not coming in with me? <laughs> the very notion. You think I hired guards to do my bidding just so I can put myself in danger along with them? <laughs> no, no, no. I've taken all my fair share of risk already today. But all the same, you took the risk of coming here, even though you were well aware of the danger. What is it that draws you here so strongly, like a moth to a flame? Camellia, that's enough. Oh, it seems I hit a sore spot. She quickly covers the smile that flits across her face. All right, I understand. Well, get on with it. Or are you waiting for a special order? I shall await your signal. Horcus pauses, and good luck in there, uh, I suppose. <laughs> All right, let's make it happen. We march ahead. In there, yep, all good. Hundred percent, excellent. I hope you appreciate this. I hope you appreciate this. A box filled with a variety of whips and floggers. A set of collars of various sizes. Hmm, sickle of falter. Whenever this plus one sickle lands a hit on the enemy, the target must pass a reflex saving throw or become staggered for one round. If you're using sickles, that might be helpful. Chains, handcuffs, shackles, a collection, arrival of prisons. Interesting. And here we go. I crave your commands. Oh, you know what? I forgot to uh, activate some of the busts that I wanted to use. Excellent. And that works too. Boom, ba da, bump, bump, bump. Got an interesting recipe. What is the recipe? Composite Lombro, Master Preservator. Recipe is not showing up. Sorry, one moment. Uh, seasoned wings and thighs. Okay. No idea what that does. We'll rest a lot more when we get to like level. Um, gets to act two and three it's only in this in this particular act where things feel very very tight from a time time Our perspective that on. i'm careful to rest as little as possible I sure to uh, i tried to oh oh yeah get him get him get him get him no. all right now flame blade yeah sure oh uh, that's not good all right yep I think this would probably be a good time to activate some much needed buffs so I can start letting them just carve me up like that Ooh, masterwork dagger this time excellent got some books somebody was asking me if the books that increase your stats have a special marker on them I thought they did but I'm I feel relatively sure I would have picked up one of them by now and none of them have any sort of special marking so goodness. maybe that's no longer the case I welcome your all right mm-hmm there we go and you know no I don't even need that all right now um, how long does this last right now it's only la gonna last me about five minutes but but you know, he has access to it as well, so it's not like I have to be all that liberal with the usage of it. 
And then she will definitely give that to him. Stop getting absolutely obliterated. And is there anything else that I want to add on? You, a large person, I'm not going to use that for anyone. Um, you know, we'll add that on later. Well, and then you, what's your deal? That, that, yeah, nothing else you could do. You could use this on Buckbeat, yeah. Yes. And then that's it for now. Just do this. You're not going to be able to help all that much. I could rest to uh, get her spells back, but again, I don't want. Let's prove their logic is I don't want to have to rescue all them. Why aren't more melee people coming out? What's the problem? There we go. I was about to say. Don't you have? You got these? Yeah. So divine zap, sure. Excellent. Speed. Defensively, Isaac needs some uh, needs work, but offensively, making it happen, Captain. I like it. Definitely working out offensively. I am helpful. Silver robe, plus one bonus on all saving throws against fear effects. That's not a bad option for right now. Since Sela doesn't have her paladin abilities. A heavy blunt object was clearly used to try to break down the door. The lock is broken and the door cannot be opened. The door to the garden is blocked. Opening it is currently impossible. Awesome. First level didn't go too badly. The door is locked by some unusual or magical means. There is no lock to be seen. We march ahead. Do not hold stand with me. Ooh, there's a wizard back there. No match for me. Excellent. The world in crimson. Hey. Excellent. Bam, 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 bam. Yep, yep, yep. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. I strongly remember in here being the hardest part of the whole floor. So while I still have my buffs, I want to make sure I go ahead and deal with this. So they can't... Um, and what are these effects I have now? I could deal extra fire damage, I could do extra cold, or I could do extra electricity. Um, and then for my primary hand... This power grants the weapon a plus one enhancement bonus for every fourth level beyond the fourth. Nope. Um, you know what? We'll just do that. All right. And do that. I hate the voice of the she only has a one on this, so I'll hold off on that one. Do not fear. Do not wait. Um, this kind of needs. This is going to require... Whoa, 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 whoa. What just happened? Oh, is that the extra Babu that just came up? That was bogus. Is she... Okay, so she's not just on the ground. Uh oh, oh, there she is right there. Damn. Can she... Uh, she can. All right, lousy six. That's unfortunate. Wow. I didn't realize you get obliterated like that. Yep, I knew I needed to start with this. Um, here, yeah, go ahead. There we go. Yep, that's not gonna work. Ba -ba -bum -bum, bum -bum -bum -bum. Out of my sight. 
Oh, she's terrified. Oh, that's not good. Oh, is she about to run straight into another fight? That would be terrible. Strike as one. Yeah, 12 doing good damage at least. Yeah, this isn't going to work. Um. All right, progress. Sure. Ooh, worked even better than I thought it would. Uh, doesn't look like this would incur an attack of opportunity. What is this? Melee, melee, touch attack. It becomes frightened for one round. Um, but he's not shaking, so... Oh, all right, it did incur an attack of opportunity. Oh, well. Oh, at least you didn't uh, start another fight. And she's actually pulling another creature away from our fight, so I'll take it. Hey, and look at him, still doing decent damage. Mm-hmm. All right, Wendy Love. Great job, great job, Wendy. Like that in you. Like that in you a great deal. Seriously? Like, how far can she actually run? Good lord. And they're saying she's still, uh, <laughs> she's still shaking. Finally, good lord. All right, let's do some of this. And yeah, there's not enough people to take. Oh, there we go. There we go. You can come up here. Excellent. Nope, still not enough, huh? Um, and you know what? She's got to make sure that everybody else attacking. Excellent. Yep. I think that would be the right move. They'll beg me to stop. Come on, Wendy. I need you to take advantage of this properly. Um... Yeah, I wonder actually how much does damage to this. Ah, of course you would miss. Um, all right. Let's do this. Attack! Oh my God, are you serious? Boom, do 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 do. Wendy, let's do a little better this time, shall we? Are you serious? Three times? All right, she she actually missed twice. Fine, but damn. Um, does he have extra channel? He does have selected channel. Okay, cool. Oh, doom, 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 doom. This is a standard action, right? Surrounds herself with a battle spirit. What does this use though? Yeah, use a standard action only to be able to do that. Ha oh, yeah, there's no the other way around it. Six. Alright, fine. This uh free action I can activate this with? Fine. Let's do that. And of course then we miss. There we go. There we go. A little bit better. Appreciate that. 
I'll make short work of this. You are today's sacrifice. Do not hold back. Are you serious? Are you serious? Yes, of course, and fine defensively, but still. <laughs> a few of you have mentioned in the chat that uh, you almost never fight defensively, and I'm like, how do you not fight defensively on a level that's higher than core? I've, I've never even considered not fighting defensively, to be honest with you. Oh, the pet got back up. We didn't have to. Uh, we didn't have to sleep to get him back up, huh? That's actually nice. Because most likely, yep, he can get us right back where we're supposed to be. It's just a requirement to have somebody on the team who can channel energy. It just makes such a huge difference. All right, that's, that works. Saddle up. Ugly, 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 ugly. Way uglier than I wanted it to be, but it's done. It's done, and I am helpful, am I not? We're through it, so I'll take it. It's locked. Okay, fine. Oh, that's right. I think that's the door he has to come open, right? Let us All right. There are, I think, two more fights still here, still to go here. Oh, whoops. No, no, no. We don't need to do that. Out of my sight. Whoa. Are you kidding me? Oh, you know what? I never changed my formation after I brought Darren into the group. That's why he was so close. Then again, the dude just did just decide to wrap completely around my front line. <laughs> um, here. You. 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 Oh, crap. She's all the way up there, too. Fine. You. You. Yeah, y'all back here. You two up front. You. You know, you're up front too. There we go. That's close to the way it should be. Godspeed. I do not want to have to rest. So we're just gonna go go with it. Is yeah, I don't think it's possible to get the drop on that guy. It's fine. Alright. I think somebody else pops up from over there, too. Ooh! Critical hit 63. That works for me. Beg me to stop. Excellent. Oh! Okay. Um, Mind yep. over muscle. Make sure we can get to you. Oh, there is a second person. That's what I thought. Okay, yep. So there's a ranger there. And then it's a regular Cambion over there. Interesting. You know, here. This we can do regular. Let's just do it. Take you. There we go. Do not hold back. Kill is for you. There we go. Excellent. The Slayer uh, up up top is the one you really need to worry about. Once he's down, everything else is trivial. But you definitely want to slow things down and consider carefully how to approach him. Because you, you can see he'll run right past your front line and just decide to obliterate all the squishy targets that he can. And it's very annoying. Now what is that? 
Excellent. And I think there might be one more fight in here. Yep. I don't think this is a fight I have to worry about, though. Yeah, it's just a couple of these guys. Nothing special. There we go. Yep. And that's it. Nice. All in all, not too bad. Could have been worse. Could have been worse. Because at the end of the day, we didn't have to repeat this fight. All right. Um, let's go ahead and save again. The mansion is clear. You're alive. Fine work. My secret door remains unopened. Fantastic. I wasn't too late. If you'll follow me. Family secrets about to be revealed. Ha, ah, it's so thrilling. What's in here? Helpful, am I not? Um, this is breastplate, uh, medium breastplate plus one. else here the painting depicts a thin blonde boy with sickly pale skin the caption reads Horgus Gworm nine years of age a happy family Horgus an unknown half-elf and their dark-haired young daughter the painting is captioned Horgus Gworm Iris and Camellia the paintings are right where I left them. Very good. Horgus Gworm thanks you for your help. There's something off about the paintings in front of you. The blonde haired boy in the Gworm family colors doesn't look like Horgus in the least. The family portrait depicts Horgus alongside an unknown half elf woman and a little girl who bears a striking resemblance to Camellia. Who's that in the paintings, Horgus? So, you've noticed. It seems there's no point in hiding it anymore. Horgus is silent for a few moments, then sighs and presses his lips into a hard line. You see, I have two secrets. Camellia is, in fact, my daughter, and I am not the real Horgus Gworm. You're not Horgus Gworm? My real name is Darian Witt. My parents were the servants of the real Gworms at their mansion on the eastern edge of Mendev. The Gworms were generous and noble, but short-sighted. They burned through most of their fortune on charity when instead they should have taken better care of guarding the mansion. When I was 10 or so, I used to play in the garden with the wheel Horgus Gworm, who was just my age. I have no idea where the demons came from. Horgus ran to the mansion, and I bolted in the opposite direction. He was captured and killed, and I wasn't. Horgus shrugs, apologetically. Crusaders came from the nearest city to aid us, but I was the only one who survived. They asked me my name, and I said I was Horgus Gworm. That's the whole story. Such a heart-wrenching tale, it never fails to bring tears to my eyes. You are in no position to judge me, Camellia. Horgus's hands curl at the fists, but his voice sounds more tired than angry. You're right, I'm not. Darren's expression is strained as he listens to Horgus's confession. A small boy in a manor under attack by demons? Such is a familiar tale. Mendev has many such tales, but there are rarely any survivors. Take Hor poor Horgus, for instance. He didn't make it. You were fortunate, Count, assuming you're not hiding anything. Horgus gives an awkward shrug, making it clear he was speaking in jest. Lawful. What you have been doing is wrong. People deserve to know the truth. What good will the truth do anyone? Who will it help? Horgus Gworm is long dead, as is his entire family. Believe me, if there was one Gworm left alive somewhere, I would immediately hand over the entire estate. You committed a crime, and since then you have tried to atone, but let me guess, no matter how much good you do, the guilt stays with you? It's true. How do you know this? I also made a mistake as a child. Mine was much more serious than yours, in deed and in consequences. Many years have passed, many years passed before I learned to be at peace with it. So, 
I'm in no position to judge you. It is difficult for me to speak openly about secrets which I have kept all these years. I have been hostage to them my entire life, strange as that sounds. Camellia is your daughter? Yes, illegitimate that is to say. Porgus's cheeks redden. She has resided in this house since birth. The staff thought she was a niece or the daughter of a friend who died in the Crusades. I never disabused them of their notions. Her mother, Iris, was a half-elf of humble origins. She worked in the gardens here. I wanted to unite the Gorm family with another Lomo line. The Gorm name could not be permitted to mix with commoners and thereby plunge into insignificance. Iris did not protest and we successfully hid our connection. And when Camellia was born, I did not claim her as my own. As far as Mendev knows, Camellia is the daughter of a Gorm family servant who died over 10 years ago. And before you start telling me what a terrible father I am, I want to tell you something. My daughter wanted for nothing. All her whims were fulfilled as quickly as they arose. I had the best teachers and brought her the best books. She always ate well and had warm clothes. Isn't that what a parent does? You've discovered my most terrible secret. Father cares so much about the Gorm name that he raised me in our mansion, hiding me away from the whole world. I'll always be grateful to my father for everything he's done for me, even if Mendev society disapproves of some of his decisions. Would it be insolent of me to beg for your discretion regarding what you know about us? Damn it all, and I thought Horgus as dull as ditch water, but now he brings this delightful offering of a stolen identity, a secret half-elf lover, and a bastard daughter. I'm afraid you'd rather put me to shame. I promise to keep your secret, Camellia. The hint of a smile plays on Camellia's mouth. Please, accept my humblest thanks. Keeping secrets is easiest when you don't know about them in the first place, or if you possess the unique ability to selectively forget information. Like me. Nanio blinks a few times. Uh, what was I saying? Hmm, uh, never mind. Camellia's whisper is barely audible. Keeping secrets is even easier if you're dead. Horgus casts a wary look at her, but remains silent. <laughs> What's it like to live your whole life under someone else's name? When I was a boy, I used to hate Horgus, the condescension most of all, the pity on his face, his smile when he called me to join in his games. The difference in our birthright wasn't fair. Envy clouded my mind when the demons killed him and not me, and I thought it was a gift of fate. I seized my good fortune with both hands and never let go. When I told them my name was Horgus Gworm, the only heir to the vast fortune of the Gworm family, on that day, life was fair. Unfortunately, it took many years to see the generosity behind the condescension and feel the compassion behind the pity. I discovered far too late that Horgus was my friend, even when I didn't feel myself his. I never accepted the hand of friendship he offered until it was far too late. But now what can I do? Reveal the truth, reject the name, and allow it to sink into oblivion? Would my friend Horgus want this? Horgus shakes his head, tired. I bear the name of Horgus Worm with the pride and dignity it deserves. As a banner on a battlefield, I will multiply its merits. The Gorm family will not be forgotten. I still serve Horgus Worm. Horgus attempts a smile, but the result is pathetic. What are you planning to do now? Well, first and foremost, I shall reward you handsomely for your help, and then I shall burn these portraits. I have kept them all this time out of misplaced sentiment, but they serve no purpose now. My ravaged home will likely be picked to the bone, and the secret room will inevitably be discovered. I don't want these paintings to be seen by anyone else. I see. Well, you certainly earned your payment here. It was a pleasure doing business with you. Horcus is silent for a while. Camellia, I can tell from your face that you enjoyed fighting the demons in this worthy party. I only ask one thing, are you certain? Camellia doesn't answer, but looks at Horgus with a half smile lingering on her lips. Well then, clearly I can no longer keep you safe. Our house is destroyed, our servants scattered or dead. Horgus stares into his daughter's face as though he is seeking the answer to an unasked question. Then he turns his attention to you. But now, follow me. We'll make sure that no one ever again discovers the secrets of Horgus Worm.
All right. Oh, man. Going through that reminded me so much uh, how scorched frames and burned canvases. No one will ever know what these paintings showed. Well, then, that's that. Thank you for your help. Farewell and watch over, Camellia. Uh, going through this reminded me how much I really enjoyed uh, Camellia's romance. I know some of you feel like her stuff is a little bit over the top, but frankly, Camellia is one of the uh, my favorite romances that I've ever went through. I thought it was so freaking cool. <laughs> Finding out more about her backstory and what's really going on with her. What in the hell? What's this? Ro missed a room, huh? That's unfortunate. But there must not be anybody in here because it already said I cleared everything. Yep, nobody's here. Sophisticated instruments of torture. The purpose of some of them can only be guessed at. Alright. And that's that. And I miss anything? No, 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 nope. Alright, let's go. Um, so now we clear out these other sections to the south before we head back to the um, market square. So what's up with the failed ritual site? Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Collect, save, and then whatever Topaz Solutions is. I don't know what these sections are supposed to represent that you always go through slower. I guess areas that the demons have torn through already, maybe? Oh, I was actually about to end the uh, stream, but nah, I don't want to have this on my mind. Oh, Let's go ahead and just get this done over with now. And I'm not gonna rest. We're just gonna roll with it. Let's let's just see what happens. Well. What do we got left? Um, here, you're probably doing the most damage for us, right? So you could be that. Um, you got. You don't have anything really left. Yeah, no, you don't have anything. What do you have? Um, oh, oh, oh. Actually, no, no, no. I'm good with that. Yep, and then give one for myself. Alright, um... I'm gonna try this once, maybe twice. If it does, if uh, turns out to be a crap show, I'll probably end up doing this next time, because I'm tired as hell. And that'll probably affect how good I am at getting this done. Oh, we definitely need to turn on um, that, we need to turn on that, and then no let's do this. Whoa. Whoa, they changed this around. I thought, at least. Um. Because, hold on. I thought there was one. Oh, so no, there, there's one on both sides. I thought there was only one here. Before, well, I thought there was only one here and him here before. Maybe not, though. Maybe I'm misremembering that. Interesting. You probably can't get to him, right? Yeah, no. Alright. Yeah, she'll stay back. He'll stay back. There we go. That helps a little bit. Alright. Okay, cool. And now it's your turn. And hey, did a little bit of damage there. And more important, let's get let's get things going with you. Oh no, don't miss, don't miss, don't miss. Um, yeah, let's make sure Sela is able to obliterate you. And if you throw something, I think we get an attack of opportunity. Uh, she's still gonna hang back, cause. He throws things, and I don't want him to throw one of his little canisters over to them and obliterate them. Okay, now they can come forward. There you go. Let's make sure you don't go nowhere. 
right? Yep. Did what we expected you to do. Damn. Um, she can get three on you or three on you. Uh, both of you have taken some damage. The, you know, the Griffin has him under control. Um, I don't have to worry about him. It's you who I need to be concerned with. Um, yep, let's make sure again that Sela can absolutely do whatever she wants to you. And now you can come up. She'll be relatively safe now. <laughs> Immune. Oh, okay, let's try that one. Maybe that'll help. Now you can come out as well and oh see God. if you can do anything. Miss, no problem, whatever. I was about to say, if you come out of here with nothing. Ooh, ooh, that was not good. Ooh, good job. Good job, good job. That's what I like to see. Oh, but you missed twice in a row. I don't like seeing that. Who's got less hell? It looks like they got equal amounts right now. 11, 8. It is what it is. All right. Um, does this only affect her, right? Uh, oh, right. It actually it affects all allies. So you know what? She'll do that. She'll do that. And then you know what? She's gonna come. She's gonna come around here. And make sure it impacts him as well. Yep. There we go. And let's try it again. Are you immune? You are not immune. There we go. And can you get a hit? Nope, you can't, but that's okay. And then what about you? And almost, almost got you. Oh, you are, you hit Buck Beat bad that time. Damn. But uh, Isaac is holding steady. Oh, come on, bro. How many times? Oh, I missed it by one, man. <sighs> come on, Windwall, please end this. Are you serious? Damn. Well, that's some bit of positive news. And still not there. Fine. Here. Come on now. One of you get it. There we go. Woo. All right. Make it happen, Captain. Light bow of Oracle's misery. That sounds like something Darren should probably have. Yeah, this dude, he will just fling bombs at you. Wait, I should have been able to loot bombs. Didn't I kill him before he threw any bombs? Should have gave me some. Oh, well. Um, Receive the fish on the stick menu. Or recipe, rather. Um, and put you there. Skip the pleasantries. Oh, we don't have any more ability channel energy anyway. That's fine. Here. Let's do use that. And then use it to fully heal. There we go. And you're back there. Uh, seal is still riding on top of you. Excellent. All right. Because we come in here. And then it's going to be the same deal all over again. So, Sela, go ahead. War. There we go. Fortunately, no way to get the drop on them, really. Uh, evil Eye. Wendy. Oh, you can't get three? Uh, all right, but you did hit it. Hit it, Lee, so I'll take that. Oh, yeah, you can't do that. That's fine. Ooh. Got two of them. Very nice. Very, very nice. You are relevant. I'll make short work of this. Ah, uh, skip both of their turns. Very nice. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Oh, no, 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 no. I shouldn't have done that. Because now he's going to attack her first. Unless when I was able to take them out, which he's not. Unfortunate. Oh, but it'll let him. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Okay, there we go. Excellent. Um, can he? No, he can't charge. And I almost kind of don't. I'm gonna let him do what he's gonna do first. Ooh, attacks of opportunity. That's interesting. 
Why did attack of opportunity? Um, Sela makes attack of opportunity. Buckbeat makes an attack of opportunity. Huh? That's interesting. I don't know what trick would have triggered that. Um, but you he's almost up out of there. Window up. You want to go ahead and end this? There we go. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right. That didn't go badly at all. Something's over here. And we're up out of here. Excellent. All right. Now, Topaz Solutions. All right. Tear Bayed residence let's go ahead and go there i'm at medium encumbrance right now damn and i got several places i gotta go to before i'm gonna head back as well whoa oh it's just the flies okay flies and spiders flies and spiders he's in front of the spider so i ain't gotta worry about that um the spider the spider over here is unfortunate but i think the flies are easier to take out yeah um, yeah, we'll do this. Are you serious? Both y'all missed? That's unfortunate. Can you? Yeah, you can. And you can miss. Alright, fine. Here's what it is. Uh... Jeez, none of y'all want to be... Want to cooperate right now, huh? Doom, 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 doom. Yeah, don't need a... Ooh! <laughs> Excellent. Um, there we go. There we go. Very nice. Very, very nice. Excellent. Um, and then you. Excellent. Mind over muscle. Precision and Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. No big deal. Excellent. And now keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Go, 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 go. Excellent. Tear Bay Residence. What's here? I don't remember what's here, honestly. Oh, I think I do remember now, actually. Okay, this is a good place to stop. I think one of those uh, pleasure demons is in there, and she's absolutely brutal. We might go ahead and just go ahead and take a rest, take a risk uh, before we get it, um, before we deal with her. But that'll happen on the next episode. Hope you all enjoyed this episode. As always, please leave a comment down below. Leave a like, share the content. I appreciate all the support. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Take care.